Hi YouTube world, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I'm Adrienne, I live in New York City and I love playing with makeup. And this is my week in makeup series where I jump on and let you know what I've been trying from my stash, what's been working, what hasn't, and give you the lowdown. And I'm still on my journey to lessen my collection. And I am making, I feel like huge headway. This week in particular, I felt pretty ruthless about eyeshadows and I've been playing around with eyeshadows a lot. And so I'm pretty proud of that. And so I wanted to start with it first, which normally I'm like, let's start with in the order of how you apply makeup. But no, you know what? Let's get into the eyeshadows because I feel like I really made a dent here. I'll just start with what's on my eyes right now. I am wearing this beautiful duo from Bobbi Brown. This was a limited edition release. I purchased mine on Selfridges, but I don't think it's available anymore. Maybe it was on Harrods, but it's just these two shadows. That's all that's on my eyes. And they just are beautiful. This one is a bit of like a duochromatic glitter. It has like this flip of, uh, reddish and then this yellow and it's really actually quite sparkly and yet not heavy on the eyes. I feel like sometimes with these luxury eyeshadows and this is that plummy color, um, really light, not heavily pigmented. You have to really go in and build it up but it does build up, it layers so well. And I, um, I've been wearing it all day long. It performed really well. I just like the look that I can get from it. This is called the Lux Eyeshadow Duo with the shades Center Stage and Smooth Groove. I really like it, um, happy to have it. I'm still on my journey of Natasha Denona and I hit a little bumpy patch with Natasha Denona this week. Uh, starting off with the Safari palette, so this is a discontinued palette. I got mine a, not so long ago from someone off of uh, Poshmark and it was brand new and I played with it and I liked every look I created. I, it, they're beautiful matte looks, beautiful matte looks that you can create. What I realized was I don't need, number one, an all matte palette. Number two, I have all of these colors, all of them in my Sydney Gray single collection. And it's just kind of a waste on me. And I feel as though I have a lot of these looks that I would create, kind of the cool tones. I have cool tone palettes. The warm tones, I have a warm tone palette. Even my favorite look was like with grays, this dark blue and this rose color. I have all of that. So I don't need this. It's kind of, it's just wasted on me. So I'm going to let this go, disinfect it, put it on Poshmark. That's how I found it the first time around and let someone else enjoy it who doesn't have the extensive collection I do. Another one that just doesn't inspire me and I just have known it since I purchased it is the Glam Palette. I think I used this three times. Um, I didn't even use it this week. I just don't love these colors. They're not anything that gets me very excited the shimmers in here are not as lustrous as some of the shimmers I have from my singles collection, which I had that huge declutter last week on. And all of these basic kind of mattes I have. I have an even the Biba palette. So yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna keep that around. Another one that sort of surprised me and is this one here. This is the Sunrise palette. Very beautiful. I love this duochrome lilac. I did a really beautiful look. I love berry tones. Um, I like these. I like this palette, but I think I have a lot of what I would achieve here in other palettes. And so this one just doesn't make me feel like as though it even has the adequate shades I need to create the kind of look I want in it. I feel like I have to dabble into another palette. So I'm gonna let this one go too. I told you I was very efficient this week. Also decluttering all of my Natasha Denona small palettes. Um, same reasons here. Well, this one has a lot of the Safari colors in it are, are reflected in here with one shimmer shade. And although I really like this palette, 
I have other travel palettes I prefer that are smaller and more convenient, mainly from Viseart. Same thing here. I really like this uh, one, but I really like it for this shade. And I have this shade. This is sort of like a creamy brown with a little bit of a rose gold undertone. I don't know why I like this so much, but I do. This is one of my favorite colors. It has some plum in it. And I found one in, in my collection, so I don't need it in this little palette. It's going to get lost. And um, this one's really great, too, also by Natasha Denona. This is the Ayana, Ayana palette. And by the way, this is the Peak palette. And this was the Mini Zendo palette. Um, the Ayana palette has some shades, I think, also from some other palettes of hers. This is really beautiful, super easy, but again prefer my Viseart collection to these small palettes. I just don't want them to get lost on me. And I feel like they're getting lost. They're getting lost. And I really want to know everything I have and be happy with it. Um, parting with these, they're really, there's nothing wrong with them. I used uh, this one a couple of times. This is from Persona. This is the Color Theory palette. Just have so many of these types of palettes with these colors. I swatched all of my travel palettes and I was just shocked at how duplicative some things are. This one I haven't even touched and I'm gonna declutter both by Persona. Nothing wrong with them, just not, not my favorite of the bunch. I think I've reached a point where I realized I'm gonna edge into palettes that I would never part with. And so when they stand, when they stack up against another palette, I'm like, well, why do I have duplicates of this? I'm, I'm always going to choose my favorite over it. And I'm getting there. I'm getting there with it. This one's beautiful by Blend Bunny, all done up. I've only used this a couple of times. This is a really beautiful, all matte, nearly all matte, just this one row of shimmers. I love how it's organized. It's really kind of earthy and muted. If I talk too much about this one, I'll talk my way into keeping it. But... I really feel as though it's just getting lost with some of the colors. Like if I were to go to Mustard, I'm gonna go to my ColourPop C3PO palette. If I'm gonna go into this one, I'm gonna go into the Mandalorian, the Child palette. I really like those. I feel like I have so many peaches. I don't really use these gray tones so much on me. And the few times I want to, I have plenty of options. So it's kind of just lost on me. And again, I probably used it a couple of times and yeah, I'd rather go to a good home. Then I went into my MAC palettes These are the six pan palettes. I'm gonna declutter this one. This is Connect in Color palette embedded in burgundy, beautiful packaging. Nothing wrong with this one. Again, it's a color story that just repeats too much in my collection. This one here, I think this was a limited edition. This is the Timeless Treasure. Oh, this is just, um, it says Eyeshadow Time 6 by MAC. But this was, I think, their first foray into the six pan. This one's really nice, has some nice warm tones, and, but they're not too warm. They're kind of neutral leaning. And um, yeah, it's great, but again, not one that I need. These I would keep because they're so glittery and shimmery and wonderful. These are from Fantasy Cosmetica. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, but they're a little too blingy for me. They're too blingy. They're too much. They're too much for me to handle. They really are. Um, I barely tapped into this one. This is the Bard palette. Just these shades are insanely gorgeous and foiled. If you are into that, you would love this. I do have foiled shades. In fact, all of these colors I have. But I realize like wearing them, I'm just a bit uncomfortable. I'm at a certain age where I have texture on my eyelids and I need to ensure that the that the quality of the product that I'm using doesn't highlight texture, feels flattering. I still like color. I still wanna play with color, but just not in this format, not in this format. And this is the Rogue palette by Fantasy Cosmetica. Just stunning. I know someone's gonna love these. I'm not sad to part with them for that reason. Like, it's fine. It's fine. I, you know, I, 
I should have known better. I had initially a lot of Fantasy Cosmetica and I felt the same way, but I thought that those two color stories I can get behind, but really I can't. It's a texture thing. And then I'm decluttering this little Mystic Oak by Lorac. Really great, really great travel palette. It looks a lot like the Natasha Denona Glam palette and that's why I'm getting rid of it because again, that color story is not my favorite and I already have a few different options elsewhere. So that was 13 palettes. I am so proud of myself and I feel like I'm gonna keep going. The Biba palette by Natasha Denona, I am still playing with, I still don't know. It's a lot of also mattes very similar to the safari but this one does have some creamier shades and i have actually used this on the cheeks on the lips and i do like it a lot so this one's gonna stay around for a bit longer we'll see if it survives ultimately but for right now i'm good let's do cheeks um this one by nars this is the afterglow i believe no oh yes this is the Afterglow cheek product in Wanderlust. It's this violet color. I'm gonna give this to my sister. I wore this, it's really pretty because it's kind of light and not like their original um, highly pigmented liquid blush. This one has a lot of thinness, gel-like, but it's very cool toned. It's very cool toned and it does not look as fabulous on me. Kind of looks like I have a bruise forming. Um, she is much more pink and pale and I think she will look really good in this and she's told me numerous times she wants it so I'm gonna give it to her. Um, I have finally gone through the rest of my Merit flush bombs. They are also not for me, not because they aren't beautiful upon application. They're also a true convertible product. Looks good on the lips, looks good on the cheeks. But they don't last. They don't last on me. Now, I do have oily glands here, and I wonder if I'm not just spitting out the product, but now that I've really taken a note on how long things last and whether they're on my face by the end of the day, um, these just didn't survive. So I'm getting rid of four of them. Um, I have Fox, Persimmon, Beverly Hills, and Terracotta. It is a beautiful product. If you happen to pick one up, just notice if it wears on you. If it does, wow, I'm so jealous. Longevity though on this product is incredible. This is by Kiko Milano. It is the Velvet Touch Creamy Stick Blush in the shade seven. I love this. This is a great neutral rose color, very soft buildable, super easy to apply. You can go straight from the stick and blend it out with your fingers. You can use a brush. It's just a easy product. It's really, really easy. I actually just picked up a new shade of these because I've had this one for a while and I've been curious about another shade. And now that I've tried it like three separate times on three separate weeks, I mean, I've worn it many times within those weeks, but meaning I've tested this out many, many times and it just keeps performing so well. I'm curious about another shade, so I did pick one up and I will let you know how it works out. This one I don't think I've ever talked about. This is the Beach Stick from Charlotte Tilbury. I think these are limited edition products. I have mine in the shade Salinas. I do have another shade, but I can only speak to Salinas. It's this beautiful watermelon color. This is a very nice product. It's very light, light meaning lightweight. And it really just becomes like a powder finish and you can keep building it up and creates this just like watercolor effect. It's so beautiful. I wonder why she hasn't permanently released these. This also looks great on the lips. It's meant to be a multi-purpose product anyway. It's a uh, lips and uh, yeah, it's really beautiful. And I do have a lot of confidence in this lasting all day long. It's performed well, so yay. Some powder blushes, the one I'm wearing today, I think I'm still gonna test this out more. This is by Bobbi Brown. This is the Blush and Highlight Duo in Pink Glow and Pink Down. So it's this duo here. 
very beautiful packaging. I really bought this for the packaging. It's so gorgeous, so gorgeous. But it has the, the highlight and this blush, and the blush is really buildable. You can build and build and build, and it yields this soft color. Now, I've been wearing this all day, and it's still holding on. So I do like it for that effect. I don't like how I have to build and build and build. So I think maybe I just have to play around with different brushes, maybe go for a synthetic brush that's a little more rough because this can stand it. This can stand the roughness, but it ends up pulling like a very natural nudie pink, which I think would favor a lot of people in terms of like, a lot of people don't like to wear a lot of blush. So I feel like this is very, um, friendly in that regard but really if you're any darker than me I don't think this is gonna be a good color for you I know there's one other color but I don't think the shade range is very good now this highlighter is very beautiful really beautiful highlighter I'm wearing it also on my cheeks it does have micro fine glitter but it's not something that you can really see like walking around you have to really look close like in a 10 time mirror 10 time magnifying glass like that's when you can see it so it doesn't bother me and it's very smooth and it's it's just very pretty very pretty yeah so i'm happy with it i still want to use it up more this one on the other hand from bobby brown not so much i do like the blush in it i do like the highlighter but the bronzer so this is the Sculpt and Glow palette. I have mine with Afternoon Glow, Desert Peach, and Medium. And it's this here. This is the packaging, very beautiful fabric inlay, just very luxe, luxe. And this is the product. And the blush is really nice. Same type of buildable formula, but that coral color, which I love so much. Um, the highlight is very nice, nothing wrong with it. I still prefer the other highlight from the duo, but this bronzer doesn't show up. It doesn't show up and what shows up is also, it's like, it doesn't sit nicely on the skin at all. And so for a trio where I really like the blush, I'm so, so about the highlighter and I really can't ever see myself using this bronzer, it's a no. The bronzer that is a heck yes that I've been wearing consistently all week is this one by L'Oreal. This is the True Match Lumi Bronzed in 01 Light. It's this magnificent thing here. I hope you could see like the sheen, but I'm wearing it today and you know, it's a sheen, but it's a very natural sheen. It's not like, I don't know, it's not like putting like a big spotlight on your face. It just kind of makes the product more creamy, easy to apply. It's really quite something. I wish the packaging were, I mean, I love the packaging is so huge and I love the embossment. I just wish it were a little more sturdy because I've already like cracked it and I'm pretty careful with my products. So that's the only thing. I wish they would come up with better packaging, but it's a wonderful bronzer. So if you are my shade or lighter, the O1 is definitely for you, but I know that they have other shades. And I just think the quality of the product, the creaminess of the product, it's creamy, it's creamy, but it's a powder. I don't know how they've done it. I'm gonna just, it's just so creamy. Um, it's really something. So this one is staying as well. Eyebrow products I haven't talked a lot about, but I whipped out again my 24 hour brow setter. It's when it's in my eyebrows. This is so good from Benefit. If you're looking for a long wear gel that just sets your eyebrows, this is incredible. I'm also just getting through my Revolution Pro eye pencil. I don't think they sell this anymore, so I'm not gonna list it down below. It's perfectly fine. I'm just working my way through eyebrow products because they're not very exciting to me. Mascaras, I'm still using these two. The Give Beauty Mascara, great. This one I'm coming around to. This is the Tarte Man Eater in Brown. I actually really like it. Both are performing well. Both give me different looks. Uh, the I'm wearing just one coat of this one today, but I have been kind of leaning more on the brown, on the daily, and it's a nice brown. It's a nice cool tone brown so it's not 
warm, warm leaning, so your eyelashes aren't going to look reddish or anything, uh, which is a look, it's a vibe, but um, this one is just really, really beautiful. Um, a bit drier, the formula, so I think I have more control with it. This one I have to be a little careful with, but I'm enjoying both, so nothing bad to say there. So now let's move into foundations. There were three foundations. I tried to squeeze in four, but I couldn't. I couldn't in good conscience. So I stuck with three foundations this week and they're sort of the ones that I thought might've been my most full coverage foundations, which is not what I like to wear at all. So I'm surprised I have three of them. Um, I'll tell you after this week, I'll only have one. The Elisa Eldridge Seamless Skin. I have mine in the shade six. I don't know. This I could not get to work consistently. It is, and you're gonna hear the story for all three of the foundations. They are all super thin foundations. So even if you like full coverage or you, you like the fuller coverage, but you don't like the heaviness, all three of these are really lightweight, so lightweight. But I think there's something about lightweight in my skin. I think I need foundations that have a little bit more body to them. Otherwise, they seem to settle into little crevices that I didn't even know exist. And this is the problem with this. Oh, I also thought this was very drying. Um, I don't know, I prep my skin two different ways. In fact, one of the ways I prepped my skin, this ended up pilling, which was with my new Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Serum. I've been loving this. This did not work over this. It did work over the Vitamin Enrich Face Base, so I did use that. Um, yeah, it just didn't play perfectly well with things. So I, in my philosophy, I'm trying to get rid of fussy from my life. This is too fussy. So it's going to go. The other one that's going to go, which I'm more on the fence with, it's what I'm wearing today, but ultimately I don't like it either. I don't like it either. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I wear mine in the shade Mont Blanc. And yeah, I've worn this um, maybe five times. It's fairly new. It is so light. It is so light, you just, you pump out. I also like that it only pumps out a little bit of product. And I tried this with so many different bases. Today I am wearing just really nice skincare, like a nice hydrating essence. And then I went in with one of my favorite SPFs and this over it, and I don't know, this doesn't look great. It looks very makeup-y in between my, um, my eyebrows. It's just very makeup-y along my jaw. I don't love what it's doing here in my cheeks. Like, it looks very textured. Everything just looks textured. And I don't feel like I'm getting, like, my best look. From afar, it looks awesome, right? It looks beautiful. No one's looking at you so close, but I don't know. I, I just, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. I think I took like a picture of my husband and I, and I could see the cakiness of it. I could see how it was like splitting apart and I really didn't care for it. The days that I tried it on different other bases, I didn't love the outcome by the end of the day and I wore them for a long time. Um, so not my favorite, I'm gonna let it go too. The one that is surviving for right now is this one by Shiseido. This is the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in the shade 220 Linen. This is even thinner than the others. This is thinner than the NARS. You need the tiniest amount and it goes all over your face. That is the trick with this one. You have to remember that it's a very pigmented product and you only need a little bit. So I'm gonna have to write like a little note to myself somewhere back here, like stick a sign, like do not over apply because over applying is what will make this look not so great. That being said, it really is like second skin. It's really, really pretty. If I'm looking to do something where I wanna feel more put together and then it's gonna look better and better and better. 
as the day progresses, I'm gonna probably turn to this. So this one's staying, I'm very happy with it. And my lips is the um, Hyaluronic Acid Happy Kiss from Chocolate Tilbury in Pillow Talk. I'm wearing this because I wanna compare it to another lip product that I will not talk about right now, but I have the entire collection of and I'll do a swatch video on. Mainly this week, I've been wearing all of the lip products that I gushed over last week, like my Ulla Henriksen, my Tower 28, and all that good stuff. I'm still enjoying those. I'm still enjoying the lighter lips, especially because I am trying out bolder eye looks and I'll always go for a lighter lip for that. So yeah, I'm still going for very comfortable products. But that is my roundup. I tried to be super efficient. I hope you could tell. I hope you can tell. Like I said, the journey of lessening my collection is actually bringing me so much life. I needed to get rid of stuff to feel inspired and to be able to play again. And I think I'm getting there. I'm so happy I'm getting there. I mean, my goodness, I actually did my hair today. I used one of those crimpy iron things and I kind of love it. And I like never do my hair, never do my hair because I'm always so stressed out about everything else. And so this just shows me like I can have room to like take more time with my skincare, take more time with my hair, take more time for myself because the act of getting ready is just much more streamlined. So I hope that inspires you all too. It's just stuff, right? It's stuff, but it's stuff to make us feel better. So I will definitely keep reporting on what is making me feel better on the makeup front and we will talk soon. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Take care everyone.